Let's just take a minute and talk a little bit about the treatment of triple positive disease in the metastatic setting. So we have a bunch of trials. We have Pertain. We have a trial presented today, Alternative, actually tomorrow at ASCO. Um, you know, so we have these trials out. What are people's go-to regimens now if someone walks in the door with triple positive disease? I'll start with you, Kim. What do you usually give them? Um, so I give them the Cleopatra regimen um, because I believe in the 15.8 month um, improvement in overall survival, and that's in the setting of a taxane, and most and Cleopatra is docetaxel. So I'll utilize that in between four to six cycles, and in the ER positive, I'm very quick to drop out the taxane and add the aromatase inhibitor. And, um, you know, I started someone yesterday on 12 weeks of paclitaxel with strongly ER positive. She had a nine-year disease-free interval with asymptomatic lung mets. And you're, you hate to give the chemotherapy component, but I'm still compelled to do some chemo with pertuzumab and TRAS. And in that case, I'll use 12 weeks of paclitaxel, see her at week six, make certain I'm not giving her neuropathy because most of these women have already had taxane in the adjuvant setting. And then I see her at week 12 and we withdraw the chemo. We'd usually do the scans at that point and add the endocrine agent. So would there be anybody who you wouldn't give chemo to? Just give an, you know, endocrine therapy, HP up front, um, no chemo. If you're asking me, no, because I think the survival benefits were really proven with, with some upfront taxing. Yeah, someone who's a borderline candidate for chemotherapy, maybe, well, but sure. I agree. I think that... Uh, but you can give chemotherapy you know, in a way that is, is that is very well tolerated. Oh, you can give one with bracket taxol. I agree. With, I think the approach that uh, Kim is mentioning is the one that we also do uh, at our place. You know, you start with chemo, then when you begin to have, like, side effects mounting up, then you stop, and, and then you add the AI. And, I think the Pertain uh, trial... Right, that, Pertain is without. There's an yeah, arm yeah. of that without chemo, Yes, right? and it shows, I mean, you know, the combination yeah. of hormone therapy alone without chemo with Herceptin um, is something that uh, was not being very, use, very well used, frequently used, because we had the data from the tandem study right. that was not very impressive. The study <coughs> was positive, but the control arm perform very poorly. Mm -hmm. But now you have the Pertain trial in which you have good outcome there. So I think the concept of this sequential chemo followed by hormonal therapy, keeping pertuzumab and, her and, and herceptin is something that is very appealing. Okay. So most people sound like they would give chemo regardless, true positive, even some with low volume disease. Because that's interesting, because it's contrary to what we just talked about a half an hour ago. No, but remember... You know, there's no visceral crisis here. Why are we giving chemo? It's the, the label of pertuzumab, I think, too. Yeah. yeah. Trying okay, to get sticking with the label. Well, assume the label was anything you wanted, though. Let's, let's change it up a little. Well, I mean, HER2-positive disease is intrinsically different. We know that hormonal right. therapy I alone I agree is, is very ineffective. And, and there are also, the data, from, there are also the data from Neosphere, right? That was chemo, <coughs> HP, without chemo. Yeah. The path CR rate, what was it, single digits? Right. That's lower burden than any metastatic burden you can think of. Although Pamela, <laughs> which is a trial that we we're going to talk, we could talk about That's now, different. Pamela was HP, and people who were HER2-enriched had a, a fairly high PCR rate, did they not? They were selected. They were selected because they were her to enrich. Yeah. So that's the idea. Yeah, there, I mean, there may be a subgroup of patients that don't need intensive therapy in the early stage setting. And there's some designs now that are being uh, considered where if you get a PCR to bio only, that you don't get any more treatment. I, I don't consider that standard by any means because these <laughs> patients may be at higher risk for recurrence. But uh, th there may be a, a, a subset and uh, we have yet to define that. Yeah, I think to be clear, we don't know that. We don't, we that don't know that. Right, no, that's that true. That won't derive an average survival benefit of close to 16 months. Right, so and I think even, even when someone gets uh, what I consider part, like for example in Neosphere, uh, where you get just the taxane and HP and you have a PCR rate, and, but that's not the complete therapy, uh, I still feel that patients need to get on the back end of that trial. Of course, they got FEC. And I would not withhold that at this point in someone who's had a PCR, although I think in a trial setting, we might, may want to explore which of those patients may do well. I'll give an actual case, okay? I'll tell you, how would you do this? I mean, this is a neoadjuvant case, okay? <laughs> Three cycles of TCHP. Surgeon thought the tumor was growing, okay? So he took it out, PCR. 26 years old. What would you do? 
Do you, if you're a believer in PCR, you would stop, right? No, no, I you don't. Continue, continue the chemo. All right. Right. So we're saying basically right. the chemo, because of survival benefit, in the, in the, especially the metastatic sure. setting, you have to do chemo regardless. Yeah, I just think you got to do it. When you I, I see agree. survival benefits, you have to do you it. To as do much it. as you hate you. to do it, and you just want to not have to do it. Right. I yeah, mean, I Cleopatra had over 50 months yeah. of survival. It does. You, can't, and I agree you with cannot you. argue you can't, with this data. Argue. I mean, I think probably in ER and her positive <coughs> disease is the only setting where we have very strong survival data, right? I mean, we do. So, uh, how can you ignore that? It's very tough. You can. And even in the ER positive early stage, I mean, those patients yeah. do extremely well. Mm -hmm. You don't want to skimp on something you that's skimp on pretty much therapy. curing the majority of these women. Good point.